They wanted to destroy Ukraine, but got war near their homes. Recently, something strange began to happen, as the Russians themselves like to say, near the town of Shebekino in the Belgorod region of Russia. Shebekino allegedly began to be shelled from multiple rocket launchers and barrel artillery. The armed forces of Ukraine are accused of this. The Russians drove their propagandists to a town whose name they themselves cannot remember. They started talking about the fact that Shebekino is under massive fire. Just look at this guy in a bulletproof vest, a helmet. He stands in the middle of the street and talks about the situation. Вот такие вот дома обычные мирных жителей. Это город при фронтовой уже. But here, as always, something went wrong. After all, the houses shown in the video are completely intact. Moreover, the film crew works in the middle of the road and prevents cars from moving. What's more, drivers even make remarks to journalists, but journalists pretend that they are being asked something completely different. By the way, about evacuation, the local authorities first announced the evacuation, then they deny this information, people evacuate themselves, the authorities say, no, we are still evacuating, we are waiting in Belgorod, we will send you to the sanatorium, it's just paid evacuation. Meanwhile, near Shebekin itself, real hostilities are taking place. The Freedom of Russia Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps claim that they went to liberate their country. Occasionally, they speak to the locals. And while the Russian Minister of Defense is talking about the fact that there was no border breakthrough, the fighters of the Legion and the Corps say that they have destroyed several units of Putin's military equipment and are moving forward. Even the video was published. It seems, by the way, that the representatives of these two military formations did in May near the settlements of Gryvron in the Belgorod region. And their main goal, as they say themselves, is to liberate Russia. In the meantime, the leader of the PMC Wagner, Evgeny Prigozhin, went to Vladivostok. The same guy who recruited prisoners for the war in Ukraine and the same one who sacrificed tens of thousands of them in attempt to capture the city of Bakhmut. And Prigozhin openly scolded the leadership of the Russian army for the fact that, as he said, they were provided with not enough shells. The Minister of Defense remained silent. That is why Prigozhin turned to criticizing Kadyrov. Like, where are you fighting, like you say? They didn't mince words and offered to meet in person to explain everything to each other. <laughs> обращение или заявление Евгения Пригожина, в котором он говорит, что ему непонятна задача, чем занимается подразделение Ахмат. Естественно, что, Женя, ты не понимаешь, ты не должен понимать. Но подразделение Ахмат, как всегда, выполняет все те задачи, которые поставлены Верховным Главнокомандующим. Если тебе что-то непонятно, ты в любое время можешь связаться. And while the war has once again spilled over into the territory of Russia, the various so-called warlords are gnawing at each other inside the country, Putin has found nothing better than to communicate, so to speak, with ordinary Russians. Putin watched ordinary Russians on TV. That's how they talked. Putin told everyone that running the country is not difficult, but it is absolutely useless. They sat and listened, as always. And they also asked their president how much he sleeps. Whether he slept badly because of the events in the Belgorod region, or whether he was thinking about Kadiru and Prigozhin, he didn't clarify. Maybe he didn't sleep because he was waiting to see how many Ukrainians would be killed in another Russian massive rocket attack. That night, one adult and two children died in Kyiv. Two young Ukrainians died as a result of Russian attack on Children's Day. Meanwhile, Russian propagandists continue to think about 
what their victory in this war should be and how long the so-called special military operation will last. Меня всегда спрашивают одно, почему так долго? Да. То, почему мы не так, как бы, вот, решительно, mm -hmm. ну, грубо говоря, действительно, вот, почему мы их, как крыс, не уничтожаем? Ресурсы для того, чтобы решить, установить контроль над Украиной, нет. И в ближайшее время не будет. Well, the incumbent member of the State Duma dreams of going to the borders of NATO. Мы в результате спецоперации военным или военно-дипломатическим путем доходим до границ НАТО. Украина на политической карте нет. He, however, didn't explain why the Russians should go to the borders of NATO, which they didn't want to see next to them. Once again, the Russians cannot say exactly what they wanted to achieve by starting the war in Ukraine. And a certain Ivan from Chelyabinsk watching TV once again didn't understand to rejoice at the missile attack on Kyiv or to be afraid of Russians who went to liberate Russian Belgorod Oblast from Putin's tyranny.